For many years, it was Gomek, a 17 and a half foot long saltwater crocodile who was the star attraction at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. When Gomek died in 1997, the alligator farm set out to find a worthy successor. We knew that we wanted another large saltwater crocodile and we just wanted to make sure that we, that we got the right one. So I was on the lookout for a really large crocodile that was somewhat good looking so, so that he'd be nice for people's pictures and so forth and not all that expensive and hopefully young so that he would live another 30, 40, 60 years in captivity. So that's a tall order, but that's exactly what we found. In September of 2003, David Drisdale and John Brugan traveled to Cairns, Australia to see some crocodiles they'd heard about at the Cairns Crocodile Farm. It was here that they first laid eyes on Maximo. Cairns Crocodile Farm sent us some photos of some males that were available and it's funny because they're a true operating farm so when they they call themselves the Crocodile Farm they're making belts and wallets and purses and, and selling meat and so to them a really big male isn't a big deal because that's they're not they're not significantly in the tourism industry nobody's coming to look at it at this 15-foot crocodile he's producing Maximo had been in captivity his entire life. His egg was collected and hatched by Aborigines in Australia. Maximo was then sold as a youngster to the Cairns Crocodile Farm, where he grew up to be one of their breeders. Just over 30 years old and more than 15 feet long, Maximo was an impressive specimen. But Maximo did not live alone. One of his two companions was a small female crocodile named Sydney. If you saw him out sunning, you'd see him next to her. And so I, I really thought, well, we, if we get a female, we want this one that he spends a lot of time with because uh, we want to make sure that they're getting along in our situation. Everything's going to be new. We want everything to be as comfortable as possible. Uh, but it wasn't an easy sell because buying a big male, like I said, they could replace him with another male. But when you've got a good producing female, you don't just sell those off. So we actually ended up having to negotiate harder for Sydney than we did for Maximo. But finding Maximo in Sydney was one thing. Actually getting them moved to St. Augustine was another. In October of 2003, David Kledzik, the Alligator Farm's curator of reptiles, went to Australia to help crate and transport Maximo in Sydney. The two crocodiles were shipped in wooden crates inside the belly of a Qantas passenger jet from Cairns to Sydney and then from Sydney to Los Angeles. They cleared customs in LA and were transferred to a cargo carrier for a flight to Orlando. On October 24th, Maximo and Sydney arrived home at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm Zoological Park. We, at first, were very concerned when he came over. You know, he made a 10,000-mile trip in the airplane, and, and we thought he would overcome that disruption in his routine more quickly than he did. And he'd be in the shadow of the pool as much as possible, and he'd try not to let himself really be seen by visitors. He wasn't sitting in front of the glass or out on land like we expected. He wouldn't eat. He was just uh, very... Uh, depressed. So that's all we were worried about at first, just leaving him alone, um, you know, trying to enjoy and getting some good pictures and video and giving him stuff to do. And we kept Sydney separate for the first few days just to make sure that, that we knew that they were both settling in all right. Uh, and really I think the thing that finally made Maximo somewhat comfortable about the trip is we let Sydney out. So I think that was a nice first step in keeping him comfortable is here, here's your honey and everybody came together, everybody's fine. I think there's a definite difference when you have uh, the fact that Maximo was brought here with a mate. Um, I think it makes his attitude different. Um, I'm certain that it's a positive thing, but it may not always be a positive thing for keepers. Um, it can make him more defensive over his, over his territory. Maximo is a very different crocodile. He's been in captivity for years but he lived in a very large, open, wild sort of habitat uh, with only a couple of other crocodiles. The food was simply thrown to him and he has no close association with people. And because of that, he 
acts much more like a wild crocodile. Uh, his temperament is very different. He can be quite aggressive. It's kind of tough when you're, when you're either the guy that's doing something the crocodile really likes, and they always come towards you, or if you're the guy always doing something crocodiles don't like and they're getting angry at you. So I don't know which I like being. Today, Maximo and Sydney live together in the very same display that was first built for Gomek. The enclosure that these animals are in is really ideal for observing courtship and mating behaviors. What we didn't know was how long it would take an animal from south of the equator to adjust to being in our, our seasons. And it turns out it only took her a year and a half. So she skipped the following uh, season for us and she bred that next spring and she laid uh, immediately after that. I think we have eight up there in the exhibit right now, um, little, little uh, ones from Maximo and Sydney. So we're gonna display them probably as long as we can. On a recent afternoon at the alligator farm, over 100 anxious spectators gathered to see Maximo feed. I think everybody around here uh, is on Thursdays or whatever the day is going to be that he's going to be fed. Everybody wants to go down there and, and watch him. Training him is, is a step-by-step -step process, but I hope that he just gets to be more and more impressive. Right now I've got him jumping out of the water for his food uh, once a week, and we'd like to be able to do that with him or uh, maybe even a, a series of crocodiles down the way where they can all be part of an entertainment factor for our visitors and they'll get to really appreciate these animals and see them in all their glory and hopefully respond by protecting them in the wild as well. What we are looking forward to, of course, mostly, is just uh, seeing him when he's, you know, he's mid-30s right now, when he's uh, 10 years from now, how big is he gonna be? That's something that, that we're all kinda looking forward to.